Greetings. Uh, this is your critique for project one. We'll start with you, Christy. And um, first impressions here with, with the work. Um, you know, technically, things are sharp and in focus, and, and that's always a good starting point. Uh, the image that stands out the most to me is uh, this image here. I like the angle of view. You know, it definitely pushes outside of our, our typical angle of view. Um, these two shots, I don't know, they um, seem pretty standard in a sense. They seem um, candid, and um, I don't know, they don't jump out at me. Um, they're not bad, though. I like the background. I like the minimalist background. Uh, though the one that I like this one over here, this, this also seems to be uh, fairly candid. But I really like the, the tight framing on it, and I like that the, the face is on the right-hand side of this. Adds, it makes it a little bit more uh, dynamic. I mean, your figure over here is on the right side, but all the space around you isn't really uh, doing much. And here we get rid of that, and we really get to the essence of, of what we're looking at. And I really enjoy I just like the texture. I like the expression, you know, texture of your face, the expression on your face. Um, I like how the hair and the, the wood seem to have this uh, harmonious color, you know, uh, relationship. And uh, so this, this photograph here seems to me um, much more interesting. It seems like it also would make a really nice sort of grayscale image you know, if we made a black and white photograph um, of that. So uh, the, this, this image here, uh, somebody likes it, and that's good. You yeah, know, just my opinion is uh you know what what we what i tell my students often but uh so um i was hoping to look at and see your uh xif data uh, if i could see what your aperture and shutter speed were uh, just to get a sense of um, how you're utilizing the camera and, and aperture in particular uh, so that's that's not oh here we have this information uh, F18, you know, large depth of field, which doesn't affect this image too much because there's not a lot of space in front of you or behind you or whatever. Uh, though it, it would be interesting to see this with a really narrow depth of field um, if you uh, had like a 2.8 aperture and if you zoomed in, uh, you have 18.3 millimeters. If you had zoomed in like a 100 millimeter lens, you know, you'd, the camera would have to go back several feet, 10, 20 feet. Uh, maybe even 30 feet to, to get the same image. But it'd be interesting to see if this were out of focus and your face were sharp and then this were out of focus. I think that'd add a, a little more like drama and or emphasis to your figure. So that's uh, um, one of the things we want to start thinking about with the camera. But I do really like this image. I just like your gaze off to my right, your left. Uh, and like I said, the textures, um, the earrings pop out to me more now uh, when I see it bigger. Um, so that's kind of nice. It adds a little splash of color and overall fairly muted image. Um, you know, I say uh, grayscale would work, but I also do like, you know, the, the color of your eyes also again match, you know, the, the wood. So there's like a really harmonious color uh, relationships in the image. And that can be really difficult in photography. That's one of the problems we have with photography as an art form is um, you are stuck with what's in front of you. You know, we can't, as a painter, just choose whatever colors we want. A little cadmium red, some ochre, a little mix of, you know. Um, we, we can't do that unless we get into editing and Photoshop. And then, then obviously, we can do that. But that's one of the big challenges um, when you're dealing in camera is making colors all relate. And this uh, image has that working for it, I think, really well. And like I said, I like the tight cropping of it much more. This is kind of interesting, too. I like the narrow depth of field of this image. I think that's really fun. It's playful. I like the use of the mirror. That's also really fun and playful. This image didn't stand out to me when I saw it small, but when I blow it up, it uh, has a lot more punch to it and a lot more drama. Uh, I am wondering if this space down here is just a little bit too much. I might crop some of that off. Uh, put a little bit more emphasis on this. I don't know how much. Maybe like right about here. I do kind of like this line. You know, I might crop off just that, that bottom a little bit. Yeah, I do like that. Sticker. I'm sticking my hand in front of it. I, I do like uh, I like that a little bit better. But I really like the, the construction of the image. It's well thought out and well executed. Um, this image I'm less engaged with. It just you know seems kind of candid-ish. And... Uh, you know, one of my pet peeves is 
horizon lines that are off and, and the you know, horizon line is off on it and I just want to take the image and straighten it out but I don't think it's going to make it any more interesting though there is something interesting with the back of the bus here with the layout and the colors and the, and the words and all that sort of stuff I, I agree there is something definitely worth photographing here but it might just be my own personal pet peeve of, of horizon lines not being straight um, and then this image, uh, again, a nice effective use of depth of field. I like this fuzzy information leading up to you. And this line here actually is really nice too, because I don't, if that wasn't there, I think this would be almost wasted space in a sense, you know, not really do anything. But I like how this line goes from soft to sharp and then leads you here. And I like this out of focus information back here. And we always have to consider everything in the frame. The in focus and the out of focus information is important. And that relationship between how out of focus, how in focus, all those things are important and affect the viewer. So, all right. Well, uh, good job there, Christy. Uh, we will move on here and uh, find the next uh, student and uh, now I've got to remember my etiquette a little bit better um, so I copy this and then I can get back to it easy all right so we'll look at Natalie's images next and good we have them in a, an album makes it so much easier to look at uh, I did like this image I think I, I don't know I commented on one of them earlier uh, wasn't well it says there's a error loading comment so maybe it was this one but anyways uh, I like this image I like the environment I like the light the light is actually really nice kind of soft and I like how the um, the background is also soft so it kind of complements the overall lighting and then that that negative space you know it creates and there's just nice light you know, it's actually a nice portrait um, image in there uh, so Okay, let's let's move along here. I want to see the other images. I have maybe some sort of issue. There's my back and forth buttons. Um, see, the, with with portraiture, it's funny. Such subtle shifts, particularly in facial expression, can really change the feel of the image. So here we have this um, kind of nice natural smile, and it goes overall with the warmth and the softness and the light. Uh, a softness of light of the image. Here, uh, things are a little. It seems it's funny that you just your body shifts just a little bit, and your facial expression shifts a little bit away from that smile. And almost going from image to image, almost feels like something startled you. And that's kind of interesting. When we almost get a sense of serial, like these images might work better, might work really well side by side, where they're almost the same composition, but we just see these subtle shifts in body positioning and facial expression and it kind of it, it kind of jars me and makes me wonder what happened in between those few seconds it seems like that these images were shot um, I do like the other image I, I as a portrait I really like the other image better although I'm kind of enjoying these two um, as, as a what we refer to as diptychs um, two images side by side and here again we have uh, you know facial expressions they are subtly different I like the lighting on this one better it's a little more dramatic in this one, though, you know, um, higher contrast. and almost goes with uh, your facial expression. Yeah, the, uh, here, I mean, this is another series. <laughs> you could have a triptych here of these three. Um, from that to this um, nice sort of natural smile. This is more of your, uh, your smile portrait picture, you know, what we would expect. The other two are, you know, certainly not something, you know, if... If you were a child uh, and you were having senior pictures taken and um, something like that, you know, the mother would probably not select this image. Uh, she would go for this image. Um, I am actually kind of enjoying the little bit of drama the more I look at these of, of this image. But then, as I talked about, they could make a really nice triptych of these subtle different things. You know, what happens in that space? I would exclude this one, even though it's similar. The, uh, the exposure changes uh, quite a bit, which is kind of interesting technically interesting I don't think you know visually it does it the photograph any favors but here we're at 1 20th of a second and at f22 and now I want to see what our, our um, exposure difference here we're at 1 16th at 1 60th so the other image is exposed slightly more uh, maybe a third of a stop because uh, 22 to 16 is one stop 
uh, 60th to 30th is one stop, but we're down to, I believe, a 20th. So there's just a little bit more exposure. You can see how much lighter it gets. You know, sometimes a third of a stop, a half of a stop, can actually make quite a bit of difference uh, with photographs and, and the quality of exposure. Uh, back in the day when you shoot film and slide film, uh, slide film was notorious where you had to be perfect with your exposure to get a really good slide. And you might manipulate it a quarter, third, half to stop. And depending on what you were shooting for, you can get a little more saturation or a little more exposure which lighten it up. But anyways, um, here's this image. Somewhat, I, I'm not, you know, I'm moving on. Kind of feel like I've seen this one. I'm not no, not noticing anything more significantly different, though I do see a little more space here. I kind of like the other ones. I feel like they're a little bit closer. Um, no, yeah, that's pretty much the same composition. So, yeah, actually, I, I, I still like these two. <laughs> that difference between them. So, that that becomes interesting. The photographs themselves are interesting. I like the environment and how you've explored it. So. All right, I am going to uh, move on and uh, do another critique here. All right, let me go check out Christie's images. <clears throat> and I'll probably do like three, maybe four of these per video. So otherwise I get too long. All right, let's see, albums, what have you got, Christy? Um, I really do love this image. I, I really, it, it almost feels womb-like. And there's such a nice, I like the light, how it crawls the figure. I like you're almost in this sort of fetal position, but it's really rested. And a uh, serene feel. I love the red, the couch around you, and how it falls off. The lighting in this is really nice. I don't know if this is in front of a window, or if you purposely chose this lighting. It looks like lighting that was really well thought out. Um, no, I really like this image. The only thing that I just noticed is bothering me is just this little bit of corner here. I want that's that's bothering me. I want to crop that off or Photoshop it out or whatever, and just give me all this this dark, um, rich red surrounding this this very serene looking figure. This is really nice. You know, it just has a really nice feel to it. I really enjoy it. And it feels like something that could be part of a much larger body of work that could probably go in a lot of different ways conceptually. Um, you know, it just seems like a lot of content in this image and, and a lot of different ways to play with it and, and to contextualize the photograph. You know, if we made this really large and put it on a wall, or if you made it really small and put it on a wall, I think it would affect and, and change and alter a little bit the feeling. I almost like the idea of this being a small image, an intimate image, an image you almost have to get up really close to, as opposed to a large one, but it might look really nice large, too. You never know until you try. I like this composition too. I love how you're playing with grids. For some reason, I'm just fascinated with grids. I teach a foundations design, 2D design class, and I always teach about grids, and I, I find them interesting. And it's funny because in photography, you don't, I'll, I'll, you know, when you're in the camera, I often have that chance to utilize grids. Uh, you can do it when you're uh, presenting your work or in other places, and force it, but <clears throat> which I have at times. But I really like how you utilize this, this grid and the figure. I like how the focus is actually on this structure, this grid structure, and you are slightly out of focus. You know, I still look at the figure, but then the sharpness of the of that grid pulls me back and makes me look at the textures. And the textures are kind of interesting and rough and they have this old feel, but then there's a human back there and we're always drawn to the human, you know, and I see the sharpness of the fingers and it draws me back to your figure. It's a really nice uh, constructed, well thought out photograph. And what's funny here is <laughs> Up in this left-hand corner is another little distraction in this image. I almost wouldn't mind this if there were something else like red in it, but it, it just needs to go. Um, I don't, that, I, top left corner, bad. Um, but it would be interesting if that were like repeated somewhere, like if you had a, you know, red in, in your top, or a necklace, or an earring that were red. It might actually work, but right now it just seems kind of a, out there. And, very interesting. That's the exact same place I said the same thing about the previous image. Uh, this image seems a little bit more staged and less natural to me. It's not bad. Um, and, you know, the, the gaze off in the distance. I do like the structure. I like the composition. 
I don't think there's anything wrong with it, and somebody else might really love this image, and I, I could understand why, but for me it just, the other two uh, seem more interesting. I just am more engaged with them, and this one almost seems like a, you know, look off to the right, or, you know, sort of composed and almost too thought out. In a sense, it, it feels forced. I guess to me it feels forced. With this one, there's like this naturalness and almost a playfulness to it, which engages me and, and grabs me. So for I don't like I said I don't think there's anything wrong with that image. I could see somebody really liking that one, but for me, I'm much more uh, drawn to this one and this image. These two, I think there's just a lot of things to look at and think about. And I don't know if it's textures, lighting is used well. Anyways, good job, Christy. All right, that'll do it for this little grouping of videos. If I can figure out how to get out of here.